The Electricity Supply Board (ESB, Irish: Board and Lightrekkies) is a state-owned 95% electricity company operating in Ireland. While historically a monopoly, the ESB now operates as a commercial semi-state concern in a liberalized and competitive market. It is a statutory corporation whose members are appointed by the government of Ireland. Topic: Business areas. The ESB is composed of several distinct, separate, and legally demarcated companies. By business area, the principal companies are ESB Networks Limited manages construction and maintenance of the electricity transmission system. The transmission system operator is an independent state company, Airgrid. ESB Generation and Wholesale Markets ESB GWM operates a portfolio of power stations across the country, along with holdings in wind and other renewables. Electric Ireland is a regulated supply company, one of three companies as of the 18th of February 2009 operating in the domestic market. Since 4 April 2011 the Commission for Energy Regulation no longer sets the company's prices, the trade-off for this was that the division was required to change its name from ESB Electric Ireland, to «remove confusion» between the ESB's role as operator of the electricity network and a supplier in that market. The previous name, ESB Independent Energy, was dropped in January 2012. ESB International Limited is responsible for the company's unregulated activities, principally providing electrical engineering consultancy services around the world. It has holdings in many areas, such as power generation joint ventures, renewables development, and computing consultancy. Northern Ireland Electricity NIE is responsible for the operation and maintenance of the electricity network in Northern Ireland, and has been part of the ESB since they purchased it from Viridian in December 2010. However, the ESB does not own the former supply business of NIE, which was retained by Viridian. History The ESB was established by the fledgling Irish Free State Government under the Electricity Supply Act, 1927 to manage Ireland's electricity supply after the successful Shannon scheme at Ardnacrucia. The scheme was Ireland's first large-scale electricity plant, and at the time, it provided 80% of the total energy demands of Ireland. To give an idea of the growth in demand, the output of Ardnacrucia is now approximately 2% of national peak demand for power. By 1937, plans were being finalised for the construction of several more hydroelectric plants. The plans called for stations at Polarforca, Golden Falls, Lake Slip all in Leinster, Claddy, Cliff and Kathleen's Fall between Belleek and Ballyshannon in County Donegal, Carragardroheed and Inniscarra in County Cork. All these new plants were completed by 1949, and together harnessed approximately 75% of Ireland's inland water power potential. Many of these plants are still in operation, however as could be expected with continuing growth in demand their combined capacity falls far short of Ireland's modern needs. With Ireland's towns and cities benefiting from electricity, the new government pushed the idea of rural electrification. Between 1946 and 1979, the ESB connected in excess of 420,000 customers in rural Ireland. The Rural Electrification Scheme has been described as, "...the quiet revolution", because of the major socio-economic change it brought about. 
The process was greatly helped in 1955 by the Electricity Supply Amendment Act, 1955. In 1947, the ESB, needing ever more generation capacity, built the North Wall Station on a 7.5-acre site in Dublin's industrial port area on the north side of the River Liffey on the site of an old oil refinery. The original station consisted of one 12.5 MW steam turbine that was originally purchased for a power station at Port Arlington but instead used at North Wall. Other power stations built around this time included the peat fired stations at Port Arlington, County LAOIs, and Allenwood in County Kildare. Because of the risks of becoming dependent on imported fuel sources and the potential for harvesting and utilizing indigenous peat, the ESB, in partnership with Board Na Mona, established those stations and ESB also built Lanesboro Power Station in 1958. Located in County Longford, the plant burns peat, cut by Board Na Mona in the bogs of the Irish Midlands. In 1965 the Shannon Bridge station was commissioned. It is located in County of Fully. The two stations have been replaced by new peat-fired stations near the same locations, and peat is also used to power the independent Edenderry Power Plant, in County of Fully. As in most countries, energy consumption is low at night and high during the day. Aware of the substantial waste of nighttime capacity, the ESB commissioned the Turlow Hill Pumped Storage Hydroelectric Station in 1968. This station, located in County Wicklow, pumps water uphill at night with the excess energy created by other stations, and releases it downhill during the day to turn turbines. The plant can generate up to 292 megawatts of power, but output is limited in terms of hours because of the storage capacity of the reservoir. The 1970s brought about a continued increase in Ireland's industrialization and with it, a greater demand for energy. This new demand was to be met by the construction of the country's two largest power stations, Poolbeg in 1971 and Money Point in 1979. The latter, in County Clare, remains Ireland's only coal burning plant and can produce 915 megawatts, just shy of the 1,015 megawatts capacity of Poolbeg. In 2002 and 2003, new independent stations were constructed, Huntstown Power North Dublin and Dublin Bay Power Ringsend, Dublin. In 1991, the ESB established the ESB Archive to store historical documents relating to the company and its impact on Irish life. On 8 September 2003, two of the last remaining places in Ireland unconnected to the national grid, Inishturbet and Inishturk Islands off the coast of Galway were finally connected to the main supply. Some islands are still powered by small diesel run power stations. 0 60 wind farms are currently connected to the power system July 2006 and have the capacity to generate 590 megawatts of power depending on wind conditions. These wind farms are mainly owned by independent companies and landowners. On 16 March 2005, the ESB announced that it was to sell its Shop Electric ESB retail chain of shops, with the exception of the Dublin Fleet Street and Cork Academy Street outlets, to Bank of Scotland Ireland, converting them into main street banks. Existing staff were offered positions as bank tellers. On 27 March 2008, the ESB announced a €22 billion Euros capital investment programme in renewable energy technology, with the aim to halve its carbon emissions within 12 years and achieve carbon net zero by 2035 <laughs> Airgrid 
On 1 July 2006, a new state-owned company, Airgrid plc, separate from all parties in the Irish electricity sector, took over responsibility for the operation of the Irish National Grid. It has its own separate board and it reports to the CER and its main shareholder, the Irish Government. It was established as the operator of the Irish transmission system with ownership remaining with ESB Networks. On 12 March 2007, the Irish Government policy on energy stated that ownership of the transmission system would be vested in Airgrid from end 2008. Airgrid is responsible for balancing electricity consumption and generation and for the development of the power transmission system. Airgrid, in conjunction with system operator Northern Ireland, operates the all-island wholesale electricity market. <laughs> <laughs> Facilities Tarbot and Great Island were sold to Endesa in 2008 under the asset divestment strategy agreed with the CER. This aims to lessen ESB GWM's market dominant position. The ESB also has significant holdings in wind generation, principally through its wholly owned subsidiary, Hibernian Wind Power. Topic standards The Shannon scheme was the start of the ESB's heavy reliance on German and Swedish electro-technology. Siemens, AEG and ASEA now AB equipment was used throughout the Irish generation and distribution system. The Irish system standardised on the 220 volt 50 hertz now 230 volt single phase and 380 volt now 400 volt three phase supply systems, which had been developed by Siemens and AEG in Germany. Residential installations followed a mixture of British BS and German DVE and DIN standards. Siemens standard Diazd and the more modern Neosd fuses remain the standard type of fuse used in domestic and industrial installations and modern circuit breakers comply with German DIN standards. British core colours red live, black neutral, and green earth, ground were used. These were later updated to brown live, blue neutral, and green and yellow earth, ground as per CENELEC and European standards. Three-phase core colors also comply with EU standards, brown L1, black L2, gray L3, blue neutral, green and yellow earth, ground. British wiring accessories have generally been used in residential and light commercial installations e.g. junction boxes, light switches, wires and cables etc. However, in recent years European standard wiring accessories are beginning to replace some of these. In industrial installations, Irish standards have always tended to follow German DIN and DVE norms. Earthing, grounding system TNCS is preferred. This is referred to in Ireland as a neutralised supply. Most homes and businesses are connected to such a system. Where this system is used, all metal pipe work must be bonded i.e. connected to the system's earth, ground creating an equipotential zone. In such an installation earth straps and yellow and green earth wires can be seen connected to pipework under sinks, in heating systems etc. TT system is used where TNCS earthing is not possible due to the design of the local distribution network, or the geology. This system is referred to as unneutralized or not neutralized, where a TT network connection is used. The entire supply must be protected by an RCD converting a TT supply to a TNC supply. Neutralization may only be carried out by an ESB engineer with the approval of ESB networks. Under no circumstances should a homeowner, or an electrical contractor make any connection between the earth, ground and neutral. 
To do so inappropriately could expose people to a risk of serious shock or electrocution. Plugs and socket outlets German Schuko socket outlets were once widely used alongside the British standard BS 546 round pin plugs both three pin and two pin varieties. However, both of these systems were replaced by BS 1363, standardised as Irish standard is 401 plug and IS 411 socket outlet. This standard eliminated incompatibilities between Ireland and Northern Ireland and was chosen as it was completely incompatible with both the old Schuko or BS 546 installations and encouraged people to rewire their homes to comply with the new standard. It removed the possibility of connecting Class I requiring an earth connection appliances, to socket outlets that are either unearthed ungrounded or with incompatible earthing contacts, e.g. two-pin side earthed Schuko plug will not make earth contact with a 3-hole, 5-amp BS 546 socket. Until UK and Irish voltages were standardised at 230 volts in the 1990s, it was common for such plugs to be pre-fitted on appliances destined for the Irish market, although they were prohibited on appliances destined for the United Kingdom market. Both countries now require the pre-fitting of BS 1363 plugs on domestic appliances. It is now extremely rare to find a non-BS1363 plug in use. The 5 amp version of BS546 is sometimes used for lamps controlled by a central switch or dimmer. They may also be used for other specialist purposes. It is therefore, not advisable to connect an appliance to such a socket outlet and tourists should not use adapters to connect to them if they are present in hotel bedrooms. They are exclusively for lighting or specialist purposes. Industrial, heavy commercial and stage, studio installations use European standard is N60309-1999 IEC 60309 plugs and sockets. These are also used for stage and studio lighting, in recent preference to BS 546 15 amp fittings. The distribution board system used in Irish homes also differs substantially from those used in the UK and elsewhere. All distribution boards fuse boxes are required to have a main fuse or main breaker rated at the maximum permissible load for that installation. Typically, this is a 63A fuse and a switch, or a monized fuse isolator which accepts a neosed fuse. The distribution boards have been using DIN rail modular mounting systems for several decades. Even older fuse systems may be mounted on DIN rails. 30 mA RCD protection is required for all socket outlets since 1981, however it may also be present on older installations. Homes are typically wired as follows. Lighting, 10 amp radials Socket outlets, 16 AAMP or 20 AAMP radials RCD required 32A ring final circuits are permitted, but are not generally used as frequently as in the UK and are quite rare. Fixed appliances, 16 amp or 20 amp radials RCD may be required water heater 20 amp radial rcd required cookers 32 to 45 amp radial rcd not required but may be fitted optionally hob 32 to 45 a radial rcd not required but may be fitted optionally showers 32 to 45 amp radial rcd protected Outdoor sockets, 16 or 20A radials RCD required lighting 
Bayonet mount bulbs are used in most standard fittings and have been the dominant standard in most installations since the introduction of electric lighting in Ireland. Various styles of bayonet cap and mounts are used for a variety of sizes and types of bulbs, including spots and halogens. Edison screw fittings are not as common, but may be found on some imported lighting equipment, particularly from southern Europe. Low voltage halogen bulbs use bipen fittings. Standards are controlled by the Electrotechnical Council of Ireland (ETCI) and the National Standards Authority of Ireland. Topic: Employees. The ESB is one of the largest companies in Ireland and employs around 7,000 people. It is 5% owned by its workers. This ownership is known as ESB ESOP, Employee Share Ownership Plan, Trustee Limited. The company is heavily unionized with the Technical, Engineering and Electrical Union being one of the largest unions in the company, and the Energy Services Union devoted to representing more senior staff at the organization. The last major strike was in 1991, though strike action has been threatened as recently as February 2005 and often at times of industrial dispute. National surveys show, in line with other similar semi-state sector workers, that wages are above the national average. One recent survey too showed that the average salary costs are twice the national average. It should, however, be remembered that workers of the company may be on call after hours, weekends, and at holidays because of the unpredictability of emergencies. Topic. See also Ireland History of Ireland List of Irish companies Public ownership State-owned enterprise Viridian Group Northern Ireland Electricity Company Rolling blackout The «zone rotor» system used during labour strikes Green Emotion Project William F. Rowe